On January 24 of 2021, Portugal will have a presidential election, and today's video will be about the candidates. This presidential election is different than most, not because the Portuguese system changed to give more powers to the president, but because Portugal is in its worst situation ever, and both the current president and the socialist government, that the current president supports in every way, have made things even worse. Speaking of the current president, let's start with him, since he is running for re-election. Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa is a career politician, but with the exception of being president and the leader of his party, he never accomplished much. He was the leader of PSD, the Portuguese Social Democratic Party, for three years and was Secretary of State and Minister of Parliamentary Affairs for a few years in the 1980s, with no noteworthy actions. And the biggest noteworthy action of his presidency, besides aligning himself with the socialist government in every way, is the fact that he is a media hound. He wants to be the focus of any subject and turn the presidency into a joke, a reality show of ridiculous proportions. In my videos about Portuguese political figures, I already covered one of his most ridiculous publicity stunts, where he literally visited and took photos with the criminals that threw rocks at the police when the police was called to that neighborhood after reports of disturbances there. Marcel Rebelo de Sousa was also the president during the tragic fires of 2017, where he essentially did everything to try and cover up the socialist government absurd failure that cost the lives of at least 120 people that year. Even though the government made the exact same mistakes of the fire of June 2017 in the fire of October 2017, Marcel Rebelo de Sousa did nothing to punish such incompetence that resulted in a never-before-seen number of fatalities by fires in Portugal. Still in the context of the 2017 fires, Marcelo's publicity stunts went as far as claiming that the houses destroyed by the fires would be rebuilt by the end of 2017. Instead, only at the end of 2019 were all the houses rebuilt. Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa also promised to end the homeless problem in Portugal. Instead, and between 2014 and 2018, of which three years are of Marcelo's presidency, the number of homeless people in Portugal actually increased by more than 150%. Marcel Rebelo de Sousa was also involved in the disgraceful and criminal Tancos weapons robbery, since he most certainly knew what happened by means of the leader of his military house, João Cordeiro, that resigned from his position amid the scandal. The knowledge of João Cordeiro included the fact that the military police was involved in staging the recovery of the weapons that were stolen. Marcelo, however, denies he knew anything. Marcel Rebelo de Sousa also approved several laws from the socialist government that are unconstitutional, like higher minimum wage for public servants and lower working hours per week for public servants. In Portugal, the president is supposed to uphold the constitution. Marcelo did the opposite. He was also co-responsible for the pressure on the Portuguese justice system to not do the trial of Manuel Vicente in Portugal, essentially ignoring the constitution that states that political and justice systems should be independent, and he also did it because he wanted to please the Angolan president and allow a criminal to go free without trial in the country where he committed the crime. And of course his behavior during the pandemic, that was too bad to express in words. Everything I just described since 2016 was put into overdrive in 2020, where Marcel Rebelo de Sousa was unhinged and essentially did everything the socialist government wanted, legal or illegal, constitutional or unconstitutional, lied several times about the pandemic-related information and continued his publicity stunts to boost his popularity amid a health crisis. Moving to the next candidate, we have Ana Gomes. Ana Gomes is a far leftist part of the Socialist Party. She is a career politician and has accomplished nothing her entire life, unless you consider jumping from low-level political job to low-level political job accomplishments. Her biggest political job was being Euro deputy and a friend of George Soros' Open Society in the European Parliament between 2004 and 2019. She is said to be anti-corruption, but only corruption that isn't related with the Socialist Party. For six years, José Socrates destroyed Portugal and corrupted all institutions, and Ana Gomes had nothing to say. In fact, while preparing for European elections in 2009, when José Socrates was the Prime Minister, Ana Gomes said she had no doubts about José Socrates' honesty and criticized the personal attacks, in air quotes, to Socrates, which means that for a socialist like Ana Gomes, being confronted with her crimes, like José Socrates was, is a personal attack. 
She only really criticized him when the evidence against Socrates was too much to ignore, many years later. The so-called anti-corruption side of Ana Gomes was also newsworthy when she supported Rui Pinto, a Portuguese hacker that was responsible for leaking documents of alleged corruption in Portuguese football and companies. She calls him a whistleblower. But Rui Pinto is not a whistleblower. He hacked computers to obtain data and tried to extort money from the companies he stole data from. And if they didn't give him what he wanted, then he would release the data to the public. He's a criminal, an extortionist but got caught and then started claiming to be a whistleblower with the support of people like Ana Gomes. Rui Pinto has already confessed to the crimes of hacking, but he did not confess to the extortion crime as far as I know, and the trial is ongoing with Ana Gomes as a witness for him. As far as I'm concerned, this is nothing more than a publicity stunt by Ana Gomes, aimed at those that believe everything they see on TV and read on the newspapers, without doing any check. Because those that do minimal checks know that what Rui Pinto did is very bad to actually fight corruption and get convictions out of it. And you may ask, why? Because according to the Portuguese constitution, any means of evidence obtained illegally is worthless and will not be admissible in court. By making all of this public instead of giving an anonymous tip with the data he got, Rui Pinto and people like Ana Gomes made sure that if indeed criminal activity was happening, all proof of it is now gone, because the ones obtained by Rui Pinto's hacking are worthless. Plus, the alleged criminals already had time to destroy everything else, given all the attention Rui Pinto's case got, thanks in large part to Ana Gomes. If Ana Gomes really is anti-corruption, then she is the worst at it, because nothing she supports ever goes anywhere that leads to convictions for corruption. Ana Gomes also invited Paulo Pedroso, a socialist involved in the child rape case of Casa Pia, to be part of her candidacy team. Just as a reminder, Paul Pedroso was accused by the victims of rape at all times, and the judge, after pressures from Antonio Costa, the current prime minister, removed Paul Pedroso from the Casa Pia process. He was never considered innocent or guilty of the charges. For political reasons, he was simply removed from the process despite all the accusations and evidence. Recently, Ana Gomes was also involved in illegal activity because she wanted to take the flu vaccine but couldn't get one in Portugal. So she smuggled a vaccine from France, which is illegal, but because she is a socialist, nothing happened to her. Moving on to another candidate, we have Marisa Matias, who was a presidential candidate in 2016. Marisa Matias is another far-leftist candidate, backed by the left bloc, and also has no accomplishments, except being a hero deputy and another friend of George Soros' open society, which contributed to the fact that Europe is no longer safe, thanks to the open border policies that led millions of Islamists to Europe. In fact, Marisa Matias seems to be very close to Islamists and refugees in general. After the 2015 terrorist attacks in France, she wanted to be heard, but not necessarily to condemn the terrorists, she was more concerned with the xenophobic response to the attacks, clearly showing who she is and what she stands for. She was also seen in the Greek refugee camp that the refugees burned to the ground, demanding for solidarity and better conditions for refugees. Another far-left candidate is João Freire, backed by the Communist Party. And once more, the pattern of a career politician. No accomplishments except jobs awarded to him because he's part of a political party. Like being Euro deputy and once more, a friend of George Soros' open society in the European Parliament. The next candidate is André Ventura, and he is backed by his own party, Chega. Chega was created by André Ventura after he left the Social Democratic Party, PSD, and has been growing considerably in a short amount of time, which is a threat to the regime. Chega is the only party in Portugal advocating for change. 46 years of socialism and communism has made Portugal a very poor country, with very little to no prospects of a future. André Ventura, the only right-wing deputy in a parliament of 230 deputies, has been the only opposition to the socialist government, and he has done a lot to expose not only the hypocrisy of the left and the far left in Portugal, but also to show just how bad and wrong the leftist policies are for the country. As a candidate for the presidency, André Ventura wants the president to be what it was meant to be, an overseer of the government's actions, someone that upholds the constitution over the interests of political parties, and as far as the presidency goes, that's exactly what Portugal needs right now. 
Tiago Mayan is the next candidate, and he is supported by Iniciativa Liberal. He is a lawyer and founding member of that party. He has no previous political background. I don't dislike Iniciativa Liberal from the economic point of view, but socially they are definitely too close to the left and far left for me to even consider them a possibility. Liberals have made the EU what it is today, a bloated, corrupt, dictatorship wannabe that subverts democracies in all member states, and have a tendency to side with the left and far left on many issues, especially on social ones, that completely override any good economic policies. So voting liberal usually means one step forward two steps backward. And finally, the last candidate, Vitorino Silva. He was a presidential candidate before and was only elected once for a political job in a small village in Portugal when he was in the lists of the Socialist Party. He tried to run for office again later, but as an independent, but was never elected again. Having presented all the candidates, I would like to make some final remarks. The Portuguese system does not give the president many powers. The president is responsible for making sure the constitution is followed and is supposed to be someone that oversees the government's actions. And if they step out of line, the president has the power to fire the government and move forward with new elections to select another government. Very few have used that power and the last time it happened during my lifetime, José Socrates went into power and bankrupted us in just six years, all thanks to Jorge Sampaio, the socialist president at that time. So it definitely is a power that should not be used lightly as it was by Sampaio. The problem is that the current president, Marcel Rebelo Sousa, has done nothing to oversee the government's actions. He has, in fact, supported them all, despite the obvious problems they would cause. At the time that he should have fired the government for unbelievable neglect, incompetence and corruption that led to the death of 120 people in the fires of 2017, Marcel Rebelo Sousa did nothing and actually sided with the socialist government in everything. It was clear from that point that Marcel Rebelo Sousa was just another swamp creature, with only one intention. Keep the same regime in place. It doesn't matter if it destroys the country, what matters are the personal and party interests of politicians, and nothing else. So, with the exception of three candidates, this list is filled with swamp creatures. Ana Gomes, Marisa Matias, João Ferreira and Marcel Rebelo de Sousa are the keepers of a corrupt regime and nothing will change with them. In fact, it will just get worse as it did in the last five years. Which leaves us Vitorino Silva, that seems to be far too easy to control by the left and far left. Tiago Mayan, a liberal that represents a party with good economic policies, but is not so good socially, which will put us down economically anyway. And André Ventura, the only valid choice in my opinion, as he is the only one that actually advocates for change and that actually wants the president to oversee the government, instead of acting like a puppet of that government, like Marcel Rebelo de Sousa was. As far as I'm concerned, André Ventura should not be a presidential candidate. He should be a prime minister candidate. But he decided to move forward for the presidency, and I will certainly support him. But I also know that Marcel Rebelo de Sousa is almost guaranteed to win, because he has the support of the biggest political parties and the media. While André Ventura is despised by the regime and the media that is controlled by that regime. What will really be decided in this election is how many Portuguese actually vote for André Ventura and start to wake up to the real situation of Portugal. The bill of socialism and communism is already at record high values, much higher than in 2011, and it will need to be paid. The fourth bankruptcy is on our doorstep, and the socialists are not stopping any of the madness of the open socialism book. We either start some change now, or it will be too late. It may already be too late. Anyway, I hope you like this and I'll see you next time.